In 2012, one of the worst games of all time was released. Described as an entirely broken FPS and a complete waste of money, it was an absolute disaster and was mocked for being one of the most insulting games of all time. It was riddled with stolen assets, half-baked gameplay, and behind the scenes, a fire of controversy raged on as employees were fired, companies renamed, and lawsuits dodged. So how did this happen? How did this absolute mess go from one of the worst games ever made to selling 3 million copies to having an average player count of just 13 people? Through hell and back and back to hell, what happened to Orion Prelude? Orion Prelude, originally released as Orion Dino Beatdown, was supposedly developed and published by Danky Developments, a company which I can find barely any information on. Like, they have a website and a Twitter, but other than that, information on the company is scarce. And I know why. See, the Steam store page says that the game was made by Danky, but a review left by the user Quantu Sanity and a video made by Total Biscuit tell otherwise. Apparently the game was developed by Spiral Game Studios, who originally fired the team working on the game to avoid paying them just before release. The game got so much negative feedback that they renamed and re-released the game as Orion Dino Horde. People really didn't fall for this trick and just continued to shit on the game, so the devs went and started to spam the game with positive reviews as a form of damage control. This backfired really bad, and Spyro ended up changing their name to Trek Industries, and they once again renamed and re-released the game as Orion Prelude. But there's one problem. Orion Prelude and their newly released project or Guardians of Orion are both littered with stolen assets, causing them to get caught up in legal trouble. Because of this, they dropped Orion Prelude and moved on to whatever the hell they're working on nowadays. Now, is this all true? Maybe. Considering the history of this game and its developers, and the sources being somewhat credible, this all seems very plausible. But now that I've gotten all that out of the way, how actually is the game? Alright, when it comes to the actual game, you've got 3 classes, 10 dinosaurs, 7 vehicles, 24 weapons, 3 grenade types, 20 augmentations, 14 game modes, and 28 maps. Now that might sound like a lot, but it's really not. The classes are your standard classes for a wave-based shooter. You've got the jetpack guy, the heal guy, and the useless one. All the dinosaurs are terribly textured and not to mention lack any intelligent AI. All the vehicles handle like they're 6 pedals for only 4 directions, and they all feel like they're ripped straight from the Unreal Engine asset store. The weapons sound and feel like an insult to our lord and savior John Moses Browning, and they once again feel like they've been ripped straight from the asset store. The only useful grenade is the fragmentation one, and all the augmentations boil down to just buy all of them. The only game mode playable nowadays is survival because... Yeah. And with there only being one game mode, it makes 60% of the maps in the game completely useless. And the maps that are playable are boring, uninspired, and I felt myself getting lost a lot of the time in said maps because they have zero unique or distinguishing features. It also looks like there's character customization. Uh, let's check this out. Uh, what's store? You gotta be fucking kidding. Yep, turns out this game has microtransactions, and I shit you not, this was added back in 2013 when the game was renamed to Orion Dino Horde. I have never heard of an early 2010s indie game having this egregious of microtransactions for shitty cosmetics. If you're wanting to regretfully spend even more hard-earned cash on this game, you have the options of picking low-res armor and weapon skins, poorly modeled hats, emos that will have you drenching your eyes in good old Clorox bleach, blades, and capes that have a tendency to violently glitch out. Putting this all aside, What's the gameplay actually like? I set myself up a private lobby since the server browser is more dead than Napster, and I loaded to a map known as Eren. After picking the only fun class in the game, I'm greeted with... The yeah, this plays non-stop during the whole game, and if you don't turn it down or completely off, you won't have any hearing to speak of when you're done. I ran over and flipped on the generator, and this is the point where I realized something. This game is completely broken. For every single round, the same boss dinosaur would spawn right before the round started, along with other dinosaurs. Mind you, the intermission between each round is supposed to be downtime, where dinos aren't supposed to spawn. I also notice dinos randomly popping in and out of existence, dinos getting stuck in walls, vehicles glitching out, sickening FOV bugs, and huge frame drops caused not by my hardware, but by the game. The gameplay is your standard format for a wave-based shooter. Spawn in, activate the thingy you're supposed to protect, survive 10 rounds of prehistoric enemies, capture some objectives, rinse, repeat. Any joy I got from this game is based on the fact that it's a mindless wave-based dino killing power trip, but all the fun I was having was ripped away by the fact that the guns are numb, the dinos are stupid, and the vehicles feel terrible. And the gameplay loop is just like every other wave-based shooter, but worse. So, should you buy this game? 
no! Even though it's only one dollar, it's a terrible uninspired game made by an extremely shady developer with its only saving grace being that it has neat dinosaurs. Unlike Fuel, this game deserves to be forgotten. I know this video is a bit shorter than my feel one, but there wasn't really a lot to talk about with this game. Uh, it's just something I wanted to talk about because I played this game when I was younger, and uh, it's got a really shady development history. So, to round out the video, I'm once again doing a Q&A from uh, my Twitter. How many hits with a frying pad would it take to knock Lock out? This is hypothetically, of course. If you didn't know, uh, Lock is this bastard. And honestly, if you go for the back of the head, maybe one or two hits and he's out cold. If you don't even ram, then what do you do with it? Uh, Put it in the computer. I, you can't eat RAM. Let's say hypothetically I were to put you in a trebuchet. How far do you think you would go? I could spend the time by working out the math for this on how far I would actually go, but I'm way too lazy to do that, so I'm just gonna say like 400 feet. What are your top three favorite racing games? Uh, there's too many to choose and I'm indecisive, so I'm just gonna say three of my favorites instead of my top three. So Fuel, Need for Speed Pro Street, and Forza Horizon 1. In your opinion, what's the best looking next gen NASCAR stock car out of the three presented? I'd have to say the Camaro, the Mustang just kind of looks off to me, and the Camry is a Camry. Damn, that Camaro is nice. Do you think the earlier Forza Horizon titles, FH1 and FH2, are better than the latest one, FH4? Well, 100%, uh, absolutely. FH4 is hands down the worst in the franchise, with FH1 and FH2 being the best. Although I love FH3, I think that FH4 was a total letdown. Do you like my dirt bike? Yes! Are you forklift certified? Damn right I am. Your ambitions to become a bigger YouTube channel are no secret, but would you like to live off YouTube or Twitch, or is this a hobby you just love to chase after? Man, I don't know! <laughs> I'm just kind of doing YouTube and Twitch right now and just seeing where it goes and where do I expect this channel to go? Absolutely nowhere. I've been doing this for almost five years now and I've basically seen zero success in that time. So, I don't know. I'm just gonna keep streaming and making videos till something happens. 